round of applause going, boost it up a little bit more. Let's welcome to the stage, Michael Connell. Thank you. Ah, oh, thank you very much. Wow, I'm a bit too square for the dubstep intro, but um, thank you. It is going to be here. Oh, it is great to be here. The other day I went to my high school reunion. Uh, kinda. I went to Centrelink. Hey, it was good fun. <laughs> so they go, no, you'd still laugh at the dubstep. Awesome. Uh, no, what can I tell you about? I, uh, I, I recently entered a raffle, right? And I got second place in the raffle. And the prize was a voucher to a waxing salon. Right? And I thought, mm, I don't know about this. I'm probably never going to use it, right? So I went down to the shopping centre. I went down to the, where they've got the salon, right? And I go, look, I'm never going to use this. Do, you have to, do I have to use it on myself? Can I get you to wax someone else for me? And they're like, yeah, sure. Who do you, who do you want us to wax? I'm just like, uh, how about that guy? <laughs> just randomly pick someone out of the crowd. It was awesome. It was like ordering a mafia hit. You know, I was like, I want him waxed. I want his family waxed. I want his dog waxed. It's awesome. If you see some guy walking around just completely bald, that's me. Awesome. Did that. Um, what else can I tell you about? I, uh, I like doing this job. I like being a comedian. People always think it's a hard job, though. Like, you tell people you do stand-up. People are like, ooh, stand-up. Got to be the toughest job. Well, not really. Brain surgeon. Bit tougher. You know, like if I make a mistake, nah, people get bored. You know, you see him sitting down the front. <laughs> yeah, brain surgeon, he makes a mistake. People still look like that. <laughs> Bit more of a problem. <laughs> yes, if you laugh at that, you're terrible people. Um, <laughs> the other job I'd like to have is I'd like to be a, uh, I'd like to be a hype man. Do you know what a hype man is? Hi man's the guy when you go see a rapper, he's the guy who comes on before a rapper, does a bit of, you're ready for Snoop Dogg? I said, you're ready for Snoop Dogg? Because apparently people go to Snoop Dogg concerts, not ready for Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Snoop Dogg comes out on stage, people are like, what? Snoop Dogg? At a Snoop Dogg concert? Well, I wasn't ready. Where the hell was the warning? <laughs> That's what I'd like to do. I don't know, what else can you say about I, uh, I, I live in Footscray. I live in Footscray. Round of applause, who knows Footscray? Yes, yes. One of, one of Melbourne's nicer ghettos. Um, it's, a, it's a very classy area, I like it. I moved in there about two years ago. And when I moved in there, like, I moved in like the world's worst share house. Right, the only way I could cope with living there was I had to keep reminding myself just how cheap the rent was. Do you know, like, I'd come home and there'd be dishes at the ceiling. I'd just think, oh, it's 80 bucks a week. It's 80 bucks a week. And then sometimes I'd come home and, like, someone's using my toothbrush. Yeah, and I'd just think, oh, 80 bucks a week. 80 bucks a week. And then I came home late from a comedy show like this one time and the police were there and they said, Michael, your flatmate did a lot of drugs. He had a psychotic attack tried to kill everyone else in the house. I was just like, 80 bucks a week. <laughs> 80 bucks a week, right? Uh, I've moved out of there since then. I've now moved to the other side of Footscray. Footscray's got like two sides. Footscray's rapidly gentrifying. And now I'm in like the classier half of Footscray. Like it's, it's still a bit rough, but it's getting better. Like I'm still getting mugged, but now they use a cheese knife. It's a nice change of pace, right? And like when I moved in there, right, the first night I'm in this new house, my new flatmate's like, oh, Michael, let's have some quinoa. Let's get on the quinoa, Mike. I'm like, oh, no, more drugs. <laughs> and that's the worst one. <laughs> uh, I, I think because I had that incident with my flatmate trying to kill us all, um, that has, that at first it made me like the world's easiest going housemate. Like my other flatmates are coming like, oh, Michael, I'm sorry about this. I left the lid off the tofu. Now there's tofu everywhere. I'm like, mate, as long as it doesn't kill me in my sleep, I'm going to be fine with that. Right? But now I've lived there for about eight months. And I'm just getting a bit, it's just, you know, they come in, they go, Michael, you've, you've mixed the whole wheat halloumi with the gluten-free halloumi. And I just think, I miss the meth. I just, 
I just really miss the meth. You know? um, what else can I tell you about? Uh, I, uh, I like living in Footscray because um, you know it's very cheap. It's very easy to live there. Uh, I, I, there's a lot of Indian supermarkets that are very affordable, very cheap to buy stuff there. And I, I go... Uh, the only problem is everything that in the shops is all in, in Hindi. Like, I can't read any of the labels. So I'm always in the store just kind of staring at this aisle of cans, just like... And the owner will come out like, excuse me, sir, can I help you? Which what he's saying is really, you have no idea what any of this is. <laughs> Which I get a bit offended at. Like, he doesn't know. Maybe I can read Hindi. Right? So I like to play it off like I can. I just grab two items. I'm like, yeah, which of these two is uh, more delicious? He's like, well, I'm not sure. This is soap. <laughs> but that one's mango scented. So give it a try. <laughs> right? I get it all. I take it home. Because I, I, I can't read anything, I have to guess what's in the, product, in the packet from what's on the cover. You know, like I pick up a can. It's got a picture of fish on there. It's a little can. I'm like, ooh, that's, that's sardines. And then I'll pick up like a, a can, it's got a yam on the front and a bowl. I'm like, oh, that's a, that's yam curry. And then I'll pick up like a jug of green milk and there's an octopus on there. I'm like, oh, that's an adventure. <laughs> <laughs> that is a learning experience. Right? But I take it all home, I pour it all into a big pot, I cook it all up. And uh, yeah, people think I was weird, but I think it's, I think it's quite healthy. You know, I got uh, vitamins and minerals because I got vegetables in there. Uh, I put it on rice so I get the carbohydrates. Uh, it smells nice because of the soap. Uh, <laughs> it's great. And people think it's weird. People think, oh, aren't you, you know, because I do, it's got a lot of weird ingredients in this curry. People go, aren't you eating all these weird food? Well, I don't mind because I got like this trick. I got like a secret ingredient. Uh, do, you know what, do you know what makes anything taste great? Hunger. <laughs> that is my trick. <laughs> right? Like the difference between a good curry and a great curry, about 24 hours. <laughs> that's what I find. <laughs> Guys, that's about it from me. You've been a lot of fun. I'm going to hand you back to Geraldine. Thank you very much. <laughs> Cheers.